I've been working up to this moment for the best part of a decade. This time, on the overnight sleeper from Beijing, we cross the Yalu River and we're in, giddy with the promise of a week in the world's most impenetrable country. When you spread the world map, you will find the country called Korea, the tour to which will leave an indelible deep impression on you. As a close friend of yours, the Korea International Tourist Bureau will provide you with every convenience in your tour. Sightseeing, relaxation, amusement and medical treatment. Korea is the land of morning calm. Which makes me wonder, what happens in the afternoon? On the way to the hotel, with the help of my newly acquired book, let us speak Korean, and particularly the section called On the Way to the Hotel. Is the hotel far off? The houses are very beautiful. What street is this? And let us mutilate US imperialism. The great leader, comrade Kim Il-sung, was president of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea from the founding of the country in 1948 till his death in 1994. He was born on the day the Titanic sank. In communism's only dynastical transfer of power, the top job has now been filled by the great leader's son, Kim Jong-il. He's known as the dear leader. And don't let me catch you mixing them up. For every eager overseas student of North Korea, the high point of a visit to Pyongyang is a trip up the most eye-catching landmark on a skyline of ambitious erections. This is where we are, at the top of the Tower of the Juche Idea, 150 metres high. And what is the Juche Idea? Well, it occurred to the great leader that the masters of the revolution and construction are the popular masses and that the masses are the motive force of the revolution and construction. A bit like the Corns hotline. North Koreans are world leaders at what they call mass games, highly disciplined and choreographed gymnastic displays or parades of tightly drilled spear carriers of the revolution. Except the woman third from right. If a visit to the Pyongyang Institute of Embroidery isn't on your itinerary, don't be disappointed. There's culture in bulk at the palace of the students and children. It's a factory for talent. And happily, there's a section in Let's Speak Korean to smooth you through the visit. Look here, boy, or it may be girl. You have no more to be desired in the world. I wish you to grow into true sons and daughters of the great leader. I wish you to grow into the reserves for the communist construction. The US imperialists should quit South Korea. And other nuggets of easy chit-chat. Says, welcome. This, said our minder, Mr. Che, is what we call the accordion room. Note photographs of great leader and dear leader on the wall. Meanwhile, just along the corridor...
girls. I wish you to grow into the reserves for the communist construction. Come on, what do you say? <laughs> The tour of the students' and children's palace ends with a spectacular two-hour show, the scale of which would humble Busby Berkeley. As one ensemble reaches a breathless climax, it segues seamlessly into another, already in position and simply wheeled on. This particular showstopper, like many others in the programme, celebrates the wise guidance of the dear leader, Comrade Kim Jong-il. In the land of morning calm, there's a bit of a racket at 7am when blaring sirens signal the start of the working day. One morning, I watched from my hotel window as columns of workers marched in formation to the factory, chanting of their worthwhile labour. The woman on the microphone is urging commuters to work harder for communist construction in the people's paradise. Most Koreans walk or march, but you can take the showpiece underground. Stirring music is piped everywhere even down the tunnels. Among the popular songs you hear are I Love an Unmarried Disabled Soldier, We Will Win Because You Are Leading Us, Song of Industrial Rehabilitation for Nation Building, and The World Envies Us. The stations have uplifting names, Today, I'm travelling just a couple of stops from glory to enrichment. My God. For souvenir opportunities, look no further than the photo studio and philatelists. Waiting for your heroic 3D image to be processed affords the chance to buy some terrific postage stamps, especially the one showing a North Korean soldier stabbing the US imperialist aggressor through the throat. A short bus ride from Pyongyang is Mangyong Day, the location of a modest though surprisingly new looking house, the birthplace of the great leader. Over 130 years ago, the great-grandfather of the great leader moved from Pyongyang to Mangyongdae here because of hard living. His father and his mother. Father of great leader was uh, a leader of anti-Japanese national liberation movement in a country. During the struggle, he was arrested by the Japanese imperialists twice. Aged just 13, the great leader set off from here to fight Japanese occupation. Oh look, there's the tie-in heavy machine combine. No time to linger today though, as we're running late for our visit to the motorway services. The North Koreans are proud of the motorways. They even show pictures of them between programmes on television. But there are no cars, just buses and military vehicles. I'm doing the equivalent here of strolling up the fast lane of the M1. These people are lucky to be harvesting. Floods last spring washed away half the country's rice crop, left half a million homeless, and from some areas there are now reports of starvation. escorted everywhere by our genial government guide, Mr. Che. Please keep with the party, he joshes whenever we scatter out of the bus like poultry. Mr. Che's talent on the mic gives the tour the flavour of a jolly school trip. There's seldom an opportunity missed to admire North Korea's industrial muscle. 
Join us in part two for a visit to the cement factory. No bus tour of North Korea seems complete without a brush with heavy industry. If you're lucky, you may visit the One San Disabled Soldiers Plastic Daily Necessities Complex, or here, the Sangwon Cement Factory. This gigantic magnetised spike roller crushes limestone rocks and turned our camera to black and white. A furnace burning powdered anthracite then heats the limestone to 1500 degrees centigrade. Just two operators control the flight deck. Not many people work here since it became computerised, says the manager, though he couldn't say where the others had gone. But this, uh, the construction of this factory has started in 1984 uh, by, the, by the instruction of the dear leader Kim Jong-un. Every year, two million tons of cement. What, what is the yellow light for on the top there, of the uh, control panel? Emergency signal device to inform here what, it, what is happening in the just working place. Emergency signal device. A spontaneous display of affection for the dear leader, on the way to another dizzying achievement, made possible only by his father, the great leader's constant on-the-spot guidance. Yes, it's the occasion of our trip to the West Sea Barrage on the Daidong River. You really can't beat a major maritime engineering achievement for a good day out in my book. But before the film show, first nip into the gift shop, which sells stuffed pheasants and blue plastic washing up bowls. There's the great leader. The West Sea Barrage is in the mouth of the Taro River, which is one of the five long rivers of our country. And the deer leader. There is nothing, no matter, too complex for which he cannot deliver on-the-spot guidance. And Another spontaneous outburst at the east end of the West Sea Barrage. Today is a holiday, and we're about to make history. Mr Che felt uneasy as we tumbled out of the bus. Physical contact with Korean women is strictly forbidden. This was unthinkable, he chuckled as we rumbled away. <laughs> The Grand People's Study House in Pyongyang, where we're marshalled into the record library to hear an example from the British collection. <laughs> Moira Anderson, I believe, singing Annie Laurie. country's foreign policy is independence, peace and friendship. We establish friendly relations with all countries that are friendly towards our country and promote economic and cultural exchange with them. In the early 1950s, Pyongyang was flattened and over two million North Koreans were killed in what US President Truman called a police action, but the rest of us called the Korean War. Small wonder then that they display the carcasses of American aircraft and the confession of an American helicopter pilot shot down in 1994. The ancient city of Kaesong survived the war pretty much intact. It's famous for its high-quality ginseng and its tree-lined boulevards. This is rush hour. Seventy kilometers to Seoul, the capital of South Korea. But we won't be driving through. 
Just a mile or two south, the road stops at one of the most bizarre places on Earth. And for reasons no one could explain, we have to cover the number plates of our bus. This is Panmunjom, the border between North and South. And to enter the demilitarised zone, we need a military escort. It's the world's last Cold War land frontier, where the great plates of capitalism and communism grind terrifyingly against each other. North and South Korea are technically still at war. It was only a truce signed here at Panmunjom in July 1953. In the tower is an American GI, eyeball to eyeball through binoculars with a North Korean soldier. Don't look for a fence or a wall. The demarcation line is a row of raised bricks between the blue huts, and the huts straddle the border. To the negotiations table, then, where the North and South still hold peace talks. They enter the room from their own ends, and the border runs down the middle of the table. South Korean was not an opponent of ours. Our opponent is the USA. Am I technically sitting south of the line now? <coughs> am, am I south of the line now? No. So I'm technically in South Korea? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Check out the world's most tense frontier again. It's that black line on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth largest army in the world, and its most feared, goes to the fun fair. The Dodgems and Big Dipper were favoured by the officers. Young conscripts scrambled for the mini MiG fighters. Dosing on fun, we spend an evening at the Pyongyang bowling alley. There's never a problem getting a lane. What it lacks, I feel, is a portrait of the great leader over each one. But hang on, what's this in the foyer? This bowling ball was used on the 25th of February 1994 by the great leader. I asked what his score had been, but apparently he only fondled it. Pyongyang gears up to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Korean Workers' Party. These soldiers are delivering a letter to the dear leader to tell him what a dear leader he is. Before and after work, intensive rehearsals for the mass games and displays bring the city to a standstill. carpet of humanity is made up of 70,000 people waving plastic flowers. <laughs> Mr. Che leaned over to me on this balcony and said, my mum's down there. wished for a more cooperative or good-humoured minder, and so the whole bus joins Mr Che for his big number.
Just who's where now is hard to predict. The deer leader has not yet been installed into all the positions occupied by his father. The floods and food shortages have driven North Korea to accepting rice from the old enemies, Japan and South Korea. They've given up any nuclear naughtiness in return for two docile reactors and a shipment of fuel oil, gifts, from the US imperialist aggressor. The fact that the North Koreans let us make this very first travel film suggests things are changing. And to underline this, a government official came up to me just before we left and said the unthinkable. Please, he said, tell your country, Korea is opening its doors.